Hi everyone, today I thought we would do a second page from 30 Days of Creativity by Johanna Basford. Now I did a poll on my YouTube and asked people whether they wanted me to do one a day, 30 day um, or not, and I got mixed response. It's almost 50-50, so it was a little bit tricky, but I decided that I would do some more things from this book, but I'm gonna mix it up a bit. So I'm hoping that through November, I can release two videos a day. Sometimes they will be two Johanna Bassfords. You get a mix of things, some always one from 30 days, and then also um, maybe some ones from other books as well. So that's what I've planned at the minute. I may change my mind. Um, as we go through. Now it's a little bit difficult at the moment to choose a page from the book because Johanna's course starts today. She has released a video already with one of the teacups coloured in which I'm going to do later and she is going live at four o'clock and I'm presuming that she's going to do something else from that cups page as she did say she was going to work through the book in order and that is the first exercise therefore I have chosen to do something which isn't on those pages at all I don't want to do things that she might then do and we might be a bit annoyed if I've completed a kite or a heart and then she chooses to do that one and we all want to do the same as her so I've chosen this robot here from this um from this copyright page to do and then hopefully it's something that she won't be doing so we're going to zoom in on him i'm not sure if we're going to get time to do the pen as well or just the robot but uh, there we go he's such a cutie isn't he now i'm going to start with his little wheel i decided to use my prismacolor very thins now i used those the other day this is the black as you can see um for did I use them for? I can't remember. And um, they were quite good for getting in small details. And uh, that's what we need for this because these are quite small robots. And I've actually, having thought about this page, quite a lot of the items are quite small. So it might be a case of picking pencils that can get into the details. Now these can sharpen to quite a good point. They don't wear down very quickly on the leads, which means that you can keep getting into those little details. So I'm gonna do a little bit darker here because I think there's gonna be a little bit of shadow from this piece here, like that, and then fade it down into the wheel. And the same on this side. So I'm sort of thinking this is a rubber. It will be slightly shiny and I'm thinking it'll be darker at the bottom. There'll probably be shade at the bottom, is what I am thinking anyway. And then a little bit up here. So we sort of fade into this slightly lighter area. Now, if we were doing metallic, which we'll do up here for the robot, we would leave some white um, or some paper to give more shine. But this is rubber. It's not going to be mega shiny. So we're just going to leave some lighter grey like that. I hope that um, is clear. And for the inside parts, I'm going to use some greys. Now, in this um, very thin set, you don't get loads of greys. Now, I want a cold grey. This is the cool grey. It's 70% um, cool grey. You could, if you're using your normal prismas, you could use those with this. But I think getting them to the sharp point might be a little bit tricky. But if you're um, an experienced prisma user, you could probably do that fine. I'm going to do this in the same way as I did this, so more here and here and here and less round here. I'm going to try and leave a little bit of white because this bit I'm thinking is metallic. For that bit I'm going to use some colour rather than the black and grey. Now I'm thinking I quite like the idea of doing a purple robot and there's some really pretty um, purple colours in this set. So we're going to start with the um, Dahlia purple. Like that. I need to sharpen it. I tend to just use my Stedler Norris sharpener and it seems to work okay for these and very thins, but it does make the um the leads look a bit wonky, but it seems fine. I don't know why it seems to do that. So for this one, I want it to look like a metallic purple. So I'm gonna go in dark here, like before, and here, and a dark here, and then try and leave a tiny gap. It's quite difficult in this little teeny tiny space but hopefully we can get that impression just a little bit and I'm going to use a combination of a couple of different purples I have got violet um, which I'll probably use um, I have got a 
uh, Palmer Violet, but I'm not sure if that will quite work. So I'm going to do this bit in the violet. So I swap over now, maybe we'll just work upwards and sort of alternate the colours a little bit. So this is our violet. It looks quite, it's quite a dark colour, as you can see. So I'm going to go darker, I think, on the outside. Now sometimes when people do amazing looking metallics, they make the shine um, not right in the middle of the item. They sort of do it say here and then do an extra dark black bit and that sort of thing and they look amazing but I'd like to keep it really just quite simple like that and then we've got a shine coming down the middle and it just for me it just makes it look it just makes it easier I don't want to make it too tricky I want it to be easy and fun so now I'm going to go back to my dahlia purple and do this this piece here now we've got these little dots on here which I'm assuming are supposed to be um, either buttons or sort of nails or screws keeping him together. Um, I'm not going to do those at the minute, I'm just going to colour over them, they're very tiny. And I'm just fading this towards the centre to try and make it again look a little shiny. Like that. I think that's okay, it's such a pretty pretty colour isn't it? Okay. Now this main part I will be doing in this darker colour. I'm just going to go in with this centre bit and do this colour. So uh, here. So again, a little bit darker on the edge. I'm going to try not to colour over these little bits. I'm not going to worry too much if a little bit of colour goes on them. Now, I'm not going to leave a gap at the bottom, but I shall leave one towards the centre. You'll see, so we're going in quite hard here. And then reducing here. So we've got a little gap in the middle. And the same here. The gap. And the same here. And just fading it slightly towards the middle. But it's still quite dark. But hopefully those little gaps just give us a little impression of shine. Now back in with our violet. And I'm going to do this main part of the body. Again, I am going to leave a few gaps for other colours. Um, excuse me. I think we will probably use some grey to give a silvery look. I find the Prismacolor um, grey, the cold grey, isn't quite that brilliant. Uh, giving a, a look of silver compared with maybe the Prismacolor. Maybe it's just because I'm not used to using it so much. But um, we have a little trick that I might try in a minute. Um, I'm not sure what to do here. I think I'm just going to fade it a little bit towards here. And then do the shine on this bit. Now I go each end back and forth to try and get the shine as near to the middle as I can. I'm not worrying. I'm not going to measure it. I'm not going to be that. Um, I'll just try and line it up with that one really best you can. I mean he might not be exactly face on to us you know so uh, yes, we're not worried about perfection, we're worried about fun. Now these shoulder parts I'm going to do in the um, dahlia purple so I'm going to move on to the arms and just show you, or should we do those in grey? Hmm yeah okay Let's do the dahlia purple first and do the shoulders as I planned. So with those I'm going to go a little harder at the top and the bottom and then just gently fade the colour down by using less layers and less pressure like that. Okay, let's grab the grey. Ow just stabbed myself with a pencil, that was rather silly wasn't it, this is the cool grey and I am going to be doing all these little bits and bobs and the arms, so I start with the arms just so I remember that I was going to do them so try and put a harder layer here just by going over it a few times and then start again at the bottom if you can't get any colour out of the pencil just turn it round that's why I turn it round Sometimes it's it's not always evenly sharpened, so you can't always need to find the sharpest bit. 
not sure whether that would really be dark, not light. Just put a little bit there. Hopefully that's okay. Now with this um, part, I'm going to try and make it fade towards the centre a little bit to give it a shine, impression of shine. And this may be darker at the bottom of these little circles. I think there are robots later in the book as well. And these may be repeated, but I'm not sure. Now this is like a little screen, isn't it? Hmm. Do the star. I'm just going to do it in a faint um, colour grey. And I'm going to do the little neck part in grey too. As if it's a sort of connecting bit somehow. I'm not sure. Okay. Now we have the face and the helmet. I think I'm going to do the face in the Dahlia purple. I'm going to stick to the colour scheme. I know faces aren't normally purple, but he's a robot. So I think he would just continue with his... Now I don't know if that's a bit of the head. I don't think it is. So what I'm going to do is go all the way around the edge of the face in a fairly heavy layer and then just fade it in towards the centre. Trying to do a circular motion, but that was a bit messy. Just gently reduce my pressure on the pencil to get less layers of colour in towards the middle. There we go. Now I'm not going to do um, these little gaps here. I'm just going to do this square bit and I've got my violet to do that and what I think I'm going to do is do a harder layer in each corner and then less towards the centre. Now the silver parts that we've done on here you could choose to use a silver pencil, the very thins do have a silver pencil, I might go over a few bits in silver in a minute or a, even a silver gel pen if you have one. Um, I do have a silver pen. I'm not going to do that. I quite like the pencil effect. I'm going to do his hands and I think darker to light is what I want to do. Let's make that, oops, that bit a bit darker, lighter towards the end. But I may do these stars in a in a pen. I haven't really decided yet. I think I'll leave that until I've finished. Now, the little um, it's like a TV receiver. I mean, if you're young, you won't know what I'm talking about. But uh, I have seen programs and things where you would have these sort of antennae on top of a TV as an, part, as an indoor aerial. We never had that in our house. We always had an external aerial. aerial. My dad used to make them. So, uh, so you see I've left that little shine gap again. I'm going to do the same on this bit. So yeah, he used to make aerials, so he was, uh, he was well up for having one. I don't know how it got put on the roof. Although he made them, I don't think he climbed on roofs, but anyway. They always had an external one, so we didn't need one inside. There we go. Now we have got these little um, antennae, and these are sort of shiny. Um, I think I'm going to do these these pieces in the cool grey. Um, yeah, in the cool grey, because um, we've done the arms like that and the neck, so I just think it will tie in. Uh, and then these little balls I think would do in the violet in the, in the darkest colour. I find it interesting that these are in French and English on the pencils, I think. Maybe it's not, I don't know. I thought they were made in Mexico, maybe they're Spanish. I don't know, let me have a look. Gris. Oh, it looks French to me. Violet de Palm. See, de, it's French, isn't it? Anyway, sorry, I'm mumbling away. What I think I would do with my Palmer Violet, which I just reminded myself that we had got out, so I'm going to do a little bit of this. Um, I think I'm going to do under here 
in that. I don't know why. I don't know. Just want to do that. Now those little dots there, which we didn't do, um, I want them to stand out just a little bit. I'm going to do them in black. But if I use the grey, it's quite pale. I don't think it will stand out. So I'm just going to go over each one in a little bit of black. But I don't want it to be really, really dark and vibrant. So just a little bit, just so it doesn't look like I've completely forgotten to do them. There we go. Now you could put a bit of a darker black onto the tire if you want to, but I think it might make it stand out too much from the page for my liking, but you might want to. And uh, um, how are we doing? Let's do the pen as well. Um, let me see. Hang on. Let's see if we can get all this shot now. I just zoom out a little bit. Oh, no, that's in. That's not useful, is it? There we go. So I'm thinking, I've got my blues out. So I'm thinking maybe we'll do a blue pen and it will just work together with the um, with the violets and purples that we've used. So in the, um, in the Prismacolor set, we do have a violet blue. So I think we'll um, use that one. Now with pens normally, the whole of the barrel tends to be the same colour, unless sometimes the lid is the colour, I'm shop that very well, have I? Sometimes the lid is the colour of the ink and the pen is a different colour, but I think I want to do the whole thing the same colour. So what I'm going to do first is just do a soft, gentle layer. I'm just going to hold my book down. I have got, by the way, I should have told you this right at the beginning, I'm leaning this book on another book because we're right near the front so we haven't got much, many pages to lean on. I have also opened out the French flap which um, I didn't need to do because we're not going that far across but do be careful of that flap when you're colouring because if you lean on it you'll get a strange line in your colouring so beware of that. Just pop it out. I just um, flapped it out. I think I can't show you because we're out of shot but um, and I find because this is an A4 book, it takes up a little bit less room on my desk, which I really like. Um, I think it, it's just a bit smaller than A4, isn't it? Um, so Americans won't know what I mean. It's a sort of um, paper size. Um, it's a standard paper size. I think you have one called Letter, which is just a little bit bigger. Or it's wider and thinner, and I'm not sure. So I've got a basic layer down. And I want to give the impression that this pen is rounded, not flat. So I'm going to put more layers of colour on the edge here. And just build that colour up a bit. And the same on this side. And then just draw it in towards the centre with less pressure and less layers. So we reduce the how much colour we've got as we go towards the centre of the pen. And we're going to put a bit more on the edge here. Now do be careful with these Prismacolor very thins. If you have them really, really sharp, they can indent the paper if you press hard. So just do gentle layers and slowly build up. I've got an indentation on my page here. There, look, can you see? Where it, I wasn't using very thins, but I was using a pencil that I sharpened too sharply. And it made a bit of a mark. We're going to do the same thing here, but we will have a bit of shadow here from the lid. And then we'll work down. We'll do, we'll take, do it in sections, it's easier, because we need to think about the shadow from the hand of the robot too. So like this, just go in a little bit darker on that edge, fade it a little bit in towards the middle. So I'm going to put just a line of shadow under there. And then go down to here. Now you don't have to leave that bit white. I'm going to colour it in a minute. But you could um, just do it the same as this if you want to. Completely up to you. You might decide to do a completely different colour pair. Like that. I'm just going to put a little more in there. I find it a little bit tricky to see what I'm doing. And then the, ah, that's better angle. I'll just move my head where I can see. Okay, we need a bit more in there. Okay, and this one, let's go over the bottom part. Like that. Okay, now the P 
pieces we've got remaining I'd quite like to do looking silver but I'm not too happy with the silver pencil effect that I got with the pencil there so I'm going to try something a little bit different with this silver here I'm going to try the metallic silver pencil now do be careful that apparently metallic pencils um, can be toxic but I always wash my hands after using any pencil I'm going to try and use the same shading technique ish so I'm going darker at the bottom and light towards the middle like that I don't know how well it shows up with a silver pencil um, just make sure you always wash your hands before you eat or drink anything really when you're using any pencil someone did say to me that there is a toxic toxicity warning on Holbein's as well which I hadn't noticed and they were quite right there is so if I tip this towards the light, oops, pencils are getting in the way, you might, it will go out of focus, which is not nice. on. Let's pull the light to us. You can see a bit of the shine on the, a little bit, on the, um, on here. It doesn't reflect as well as a, um, a pen really shiny but you know it's something to try and play with anyway so that's that and I may just do um, some of this I think I'll if I'm gonna do the grass and flowers I might just do all of it so that it matches let me just sort out which pencils I have used so that um, so I can write them down for you when I finished okay now the green, we don't have loads of greens, so I have these in a drawer so it's noisy. I'm going to use the grass green, it would seem appropriate wouldn't it for the grassy bits at the bottom. So we've got a few bits here, can you see, just checking, yes. So we've got a few bits here, so I'm going to do those leaves but then I'm just going to go over these lines and I might just go do a few squiggles here and there just to indicate that there's some sort of grass growing. I have seen people do a background with this, with a, do an arch around all the robots and lots of grass, but I'm not going to go too mad. I'm just going to do a little, just ground the items really by putting some grass underneath them. Let me just move along. I'm going to move along my, all of it. There we go. So, uh, Gone a bit wonky, haven't we? But never mind. So we do all this grass. I'm going to ignore that. Now I'm going to go for that, but not do the petals. So we might want those in a different colour. You see, I'm just doing a little indication of grass. Nothing too complex. Because we've got stars, you might want to do a starry night behind them, or something, or even a bit of pen with some with some um, glitter, glitter pens for the stars or something but I'm not going to uh, worry about that right now I'm just going to look at these other petals for now um, the leaves I mean sorry saying the wrong word Ugh, making too much noise I'm going to go for the olive green for the leaves just because I like it let me just see if we're all in shot and straight. There we go, it's better, isn't it? So we have got um, these on these flower. You can see how it's so important to have a really sharp pencil for this. Even if you go out of the lines, it doesn't matter that much, but you want to at least get your mark somewhere near the little teeny tiny detail. I'm going to do a bit there as well. Um, yeah, I think that's... And if we do these, there we go. Now, the um, flowers, I think I'm going to do them all the same colour, just for some consistency really. I think it will just look nicer. Um, I'm going to do them in a colour that won't work very well at being metallic looking. And I think colours that are more matte, so something like this, blue, this is the light cerulean blue. It's got quite a lot of white in. It doesn't look so metallic as something that's um, a blue like this, which is a more solid colour. I find it hard to explain. But I'm going to do all the flowers with this blue. Now, if you're going to do a blue background, don't do your flowers blue. 
your room. I need to sharpen this because they'll just be lost in the background. Unless you do, I've broken the lid now because my sharpness will bear with me. So they'll get lost because you've got so much glue already going on. So do have a little think you're doing a background what color it's going to be if it's going to be black it might work because it's a light blue so uh, it might be okay okay let's uh, do all these teeny tiny petals I'm struggling to see them I have got my eye test book now and I don't know whether it's my eyes or if it's just that it's so small and I can't get my head that close with the camera here there we go. I don't know if my head's in shot now. I hope not. I don't really want to see my head. It's probably quite hard for you to see what I'm colouring, but I'm not doing any shading. I'm just colouring it in the blue. And I'm going to grab a yellow. Um, yeah, we'll do this one for the centres. Yeah, I'm not going to do anything fancy. This is the um, canary yellow. And uh, I'm going to do the centre of the flowers. It may not show up. It might be wise to use a yellow gel pen because that would probably show up a little bit more and you could get a really accurate um, um, thing with it, um, point. But I've done them like that now. So uh, that's, uh, that's how I'm going to leave them. But as I say, I hopefully give you a few ideas. If you want to do something a bit different, you can. So that's me for today. Um, what I will probably do is um, I might do the other two robots for my next two videos. So we'll be doing something a bit different to Johanna. And then I will, I might just lag behind her. So once she's done a page, we might just go in and do a few bits that she hasn't done. Like if she's doodling or drawing, I might try and do something there, which is simpler because I find that hard. So something that I find easier perhaps than if she's doing it in more detail. I've got so much respect for Johanna and she does make it all feel really easy when she's specifically demonstrating and I'm going to do that. I'm going to copy her, but left on my own, I have to go back to basics. So I might share some of those basics with you so that you can have a go. That is if you're not so confident in drawing, you might be brilliant and you might not need that help, but we'll wait and see. We'll just see how it pans out day to day really. But I hope you've enjoyed the little robot. I've had great fun doing him. Um, we'll have to have a think of some names, I think, for these three. Um, I'm tempted to say purpley, how very original. Maybe Violet, maybe that's a good name. Maybe she's called Violet. But even then, it's not very original, is it? Let me know in the comments if you've got a better name. But uh, thank you very much and uh, happy colouring.